In this video, I will show you how I made peppermint coffee soap. I decided to use a mold that I got off of Amazon of coffee beans. And I have to say, I recommend them highly. So I'm gonna leave the link to where I purchased these in the description box if anybody's interested. It beats making them from scratch. Now you see all the warning signs that I've placed on the screen. Don't repeat this. When I turned on the camera, I forgot to put on my gloves. I already had pre-mixed this, but for the video's sake, I was trying to display to you, the viewers, that everything was well incorporated so we can move forward and adding all the ingredients into the oils. Now I'm adding my coffee lye solution into my oils. And I was, I think, 10 degrees apart in temperature. I believe the oil was 95 Fahrenheit and the lye solution was at 85. If you notice the batter, how rich in color it is, it's from the brewed coffee. I hadn't add any colorants in. And towards the end of the cut, you'll notice how the color changed significantly. So next time when I do this, I'm going to add the cocoa powder that I was going to add. But I figured, eh, let me just leave it. But in the end, I was still happy with it. This time around, I was very mindful of how much coffee ground I added to this batter. And I made sure I brewed it first because it can be, be very irritant to the skin and very scratchy. So I wanted to make sure that it, it had a nice balance. I noticed my batter thickening up quite a bit and there was a lot of factors involved. My recipe number one and the amount of hard oils I decided to use and then I added what you see right here is cowling clay and fragrance oil and the cowling clay can speed up trace as well as the peppermint oil which essential oils are notorious for speeding up trace. So right here in a minute, you're gonna see everything get real hard real quick. I decided to use the whisk after I added 
all my ingredients because if I would have continued continued with the blender I would have had soap on a stick for sure I was actually laughing at myself behind the scenes as I was pouring this soap into the mold because I was thinking, wow, it's been a while since I've made soap. So as a soap maker, I forgot the order of things and the temperatures that make a batter fluid. So I won't run into these problems like you see right now. So it didn't bother me too much because it's a straightforward soap. Now, if it was complicated designs, then yes, I would, I would be very frustrated because then I wouldn't achieve the look I was going for. So just basically it was a rough, or not a rough, I don't wanna say, it was just a, a very textured um, kind of soap. And I kind of like that sometimes, you know? Particularly, I am not a big fan of showing the unmolding of these soaps, in, especially with these types of molds, because as you can see, it, it's a little difficult for me to uh, take out. So I had to cut some parts because I was there for a little while. And with my recipe, if I don't unmold within six hours or so, I won't be able to use my cutter to the soap. I, I won't be able to cut through. 
so um, I find it uh, very important for me to start unmolding. And what you're going to see right now is not a big deal. It's going to go away as it cures. And the partial gel that you see right here, that, that's pretty common. It, it does nothing. It's just aesthetic. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I will see you soon with more. Bye now.